Hello there Libras, welcome your, to your tarot reading. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope this video finds you well and uh, I hope the content is still relevant um, for your situation. Um, right off the bat, so I've done all the other signs except you guys, uh, Scorpio and Sagittarius. Um, out of the 10 cards on the deck, I have six cards that are major arcana cards. And this is a big deal, okay? This is a huge deal because I feel like this is going to be a very pivotal month for you guys. I felt that way with um, the Aquarius reading and then also with the Gemini reading. So I feel like it's an uh, air sign energy or there's something coming through, some planetary aspects coming through that will be affecting the air signs in a very positive way, I feel, especially for this reading. And... Um, let me just say that out of the 10 cards, I have two cards that are about choices and options, okay? So I have here the Lover's card. The depiction is very different here, but this is the uh, Major Arcana. Um, number six, which is the Lover's card, choices and trust, okay? So choices, <clears throat> excuse me, and the Seven of Cups choices and options mulling over you know all the things that could be all the things that we want to come in um to to manifest and to come into being for us so both of these are about choices and options and then i also have um an energy here of temptation okay we have here the shadow card and the shadow card is the devil card in the traditional right away deck this is about things that we have a really strong affinity to, uh, a pull towards, that we feel might not be completely good for us, but nevertheless, we are very drawn towards it. And then with the Seven of Cups as well, this is about temptation, okay? Looking at our options and, and being tempted by other options. So needless to say, um, I feel like it's going to be a very exciting month. I'm hearing the word juicy. So there might be juicy gossip, juicy details, juicy, you know, love affairs, ju juicy um, love advances. Okay. And so I feel that it's going to be a very, it's not going to be boring. It's not going to be boring at all. So let me talk to you first about... Um, the the imagery that came out when i was shuffling the cards and um the word that i heard was a feast okay and what i saw was you know it looks like it it, it looks like um a scene on a boat like on a cruise ship uh a long ago like probably in the uh early uh decade early uh century so like 1911, 1920, around that time period, you have this man, he's at a, um, a dinner table at a, um, on a cruise or, or in a very extravagant restaurant, right? So he's got a suit on, a, a tuxedo, like a black and white tuxedo on. He's dressed really, really nicely. He's about 30 years old. And um, he sits down at a table with tablecloth and um the waiter and and I, I just cannot express how decadent the environment is i mean you know it's got tablecloth it's a fancy dining place and the the waiter comes in with the wine list and comes in with the special and the waiter is just like what would you have be having today sir it seems as if the waiter has seen him there many 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 times so this is a man that you know has a lot of wealth and he's able to afford dining at this really extravagant restaurant or venue uh, on a regular basis. But I do see that he's there by himself. But he's able to be there. Um, he's able to have the money and the resources in order to dine there. And the waiter says, like, what will you have today, sir? And um, the man says, I want everything. Okay, I want everything. And this is... Um, so it happens that this is a seafood restaurant that's what i i feel and so the uh, waiter comes back a moment later possibly like 15 20 minutes later once the food have been prepared and he comes in with this platter it's a huge platter it's enough to feed a couple of people 
but he brings it to the man's table. He opens up the little, the, the lid, and you see a lobster in the middle, um, like uh, oysters on the side of it, oysters on the side. And then there are, you know, a variety of dipping sauces. And there are also like uh, different platters with different types of seafood prepared in different ways. Okay, so I feel like, you know, he's ordered a feast. He's ordered a lot of things. And he, he does it because he can. Because he has the, the wealth and he has, you know, the resources in order to do so. I don't see him eating it. The scene just cuts out. So, first of all, um, let me talk about this whole concept about a feast, okay? And um, I feel like the, the it, it's really drawing my attention to like um, a, a feast or famine type of an environment, okay? I feel like you're that man. You're, you're that man in the, the, the nice clothing, the tuxedo, in this really beautiful extravagant restaurant. And you told the waiter, you know, uh, I want everything, okay? And I feel like there might have been a period of time in your life where you wanted everything, but you couldn't have everything. Maybe out of financial constraints, maybe out of a sheer sense of discipline, or maybe the opportunities were scarce, or maybe you were operating from a place where you were you know, denying yourself of nice things, of extravagant things, because you thought it was frivolous, right? And so I feel this concept of feast or famine, you know, um, I see a lot of people who might be in the, um, like the, the, the fitness industry where, you know, you, you have to present yourself a certain way. So you might have to go on binge dieting, like, um, heavily monitoring your water and your food intake. And so there might be bouts of time where you're, binging a lot on a, on certain foods to bulk up and then there are times when you're you know required to drastically lose the weight or tone up or shape up in in some way or some fashion and so i feel like you know there are times where you had to eat and then there were times where you had to like slim down and so i feel like it's work related for many of you i also feel for many of you um you might have been working literally working really 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 hard okay the things that you um, that were given to you, or I'm sorry, the things that were in your life were things that you had to work hard for, sweat and tears, you know, like the, the, the whole concept of like things were not handed to you on a silver platter and you had to go out into the world and hustle and scramble for all your resources. And I feel that, you know, things were like in flux. On some days the the going is good and you might make a really good sell and then on other days it's like a, a famine where it's a drought like there's just no customers no sales and so I feel that because of it when you are in a good position when you feel that you could um, have a lot of resources when you have a lot of resources you feel like I deserve this I'm going to splurge, I'm going to binge, I'm going to buy the things that I have been depriving myself during times of famine. And so that's what I'm sensing. So I feel like there's something here where, where things are heavily in flux, okay? And then I also feel, you know, the, the whole concept with seafood and oysters and, and, and uh, things from the, um, I guess, from the realm of water, animals that dwell in the realm of water. I feel like this is a definitely an emotional feast, an emotional feast. For some reason, they want me to let that sink in with you or let that sit with you for just a, a moment, an emotional feast. Hence the whole concept with temptation and, you know, a, a, a draw, an emotional draw towards a specific thing, a specific person, um, someone who's very alluring, something that is from the realm of water potentially you know out of our league okay so out of our league like the leagues of the sea it's a measurement unit um so the like some out of our league or somebody who's like traditionally 
n not somebody that we think we would be able to attain, we would be able to have. Um, and, and then all of a sudden they give us a lot of attention and we're just like, oh my gosh, you know. And then I'm also hearing as well, you know, with this emotional feast. Um, I'm hearing as well, um, you know, like emotional eating and no emotional binging, um, wanting to fulfill uh, an, a, a, a deeper part of our emotional needs with food, with, with substance, with things, and an emotional void, an emotional need cannot be fulfilled with things, okay? And so that's for a very small minority, but I feel like the, the whole imagery is very decadent. It's very sensual and it is also really uh, tactile, okay? Um, I'm drawn to the, the, the oyster, like the, the hardness of the shell is contrasted by the softness and, and you know, the, the softness and the sliminess of the insides, okay? It's something that is really hard on the surface and um, it is very slimy in the center. I feel like you're dealing with someone like this where they're very, very hard up. They put up a wall. They are very cold and, and possibly, you know, abrasive on the surface. But inside is this, you know, gooey, soft middle. So it indicates to me somebody who is who has a really soft heart. And I feel like the world has made them very hard. The world, life was hard for them. Um, this could also be you, um, Libras. Okay, so I feel that, you know, you, um, you're very diplomatic. A lot of Libran people are just very diplomatic and you show a really nice face. But I do feel that you are skeptical, okay? You're skeptical about, you know, uh, about people's intentions, about life. And I feel like, when you're dissatisfied with something, you, you voice your opinion, okay? You will get angry and you will um, be able to say like, you know, exactly why that bothers you or why you're discontent. And so I feel like there might have been, you know, f periods of famines where you're just like very discontent. And so we're coming into this like bubbling spring, the, 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 the springtime of your life. And what i'm seeing as well is uh with this whole concept about you know uh that gushy center uh feeling your heart soften all over again and being able to live your life more from that heart space rather than letting that abrasive hard um i i feel like you know gritty gritty uh outside or exterior get to you okay so it's a very very central type of a reading and uh, i'm gonna talk about you know the cards individually so first of all um moths to a flame okay so i have here the this is the five of cups and it's also the firefly okay so this is like um uh a flicker of light, somebody sending out their intentions, making their intentions known, drawing attention to themselves, and especially, you know, winged animals, especially insect, they are messengers. They're all about being able to communicate. And I feel like there is an emotional message here that somebody is communicating to you, but I feel that they have that hard exterior about them. They might have been burned in the past, they might be a little bit shy. They might not know how you are responding to them. Um, they might not know how you feel about them. They might be very hesitant about your ability. Um, they might be very hesitant about how to initiate contact, okay? So it's not like a, a calling, like, you know, I can pick up the phone or I can text you or I can, you know, shoot you an email. It, it's not that simple. I feel that it's somebody who is at odds with their emotions and how they feel about you. And crowning this is the hangman, which is waiting, a state of suspension, waiting in, in uh, waiting for information, waiting for a situation to turn around, waiting for some type of a breakthrough so that we understand what we need to do. And with this praying mantis, 
once again, you know, female mantises, they, um, they, when, when they copulate, they, um, eat the, the heads of the male mantis, okay? And so, once again, the whole concept about eating and also, I just feel like, you know, the, the imagery surrounding this is, there's an element of risk and danger and, you know, losing face, okay, literally losing your head, losing face, not wanting to reach out to somebody and have it on read, the, where the other person read the message, but they don't respond, not wanting to be embarrassed. Um, so I just feel like you're dealing with someone who's uh, not really sure about how you feel about them. And they are, as well, um, very... They might be very confused about their feelings. They might be feeling things and, and all their emotions are very bunched up and they don't really know where to begin, okay? It's like fumbling in the dark. That's what this Five of, um, five of Cups feel like to me. There's not enough light. Even though the, the animal is casting light or drawing in light, uh, but you're only seeing like, you know, kind of like Morse code, like uh, sparks of light. It comes and it goes and it's not enough light to guide you, to, to show you the way. And then furthermore, we have the moon, which is all about confusion. It's all about this really nebulous sense of uh, emotions, okay? Like um, emotions overwhelming us, fueling things in a, on a very like empathic, psychic level, um, including feeling things on a very deep emotional level, but we can't really make sense of it. Things are foggy, things are hazy. We're navigating an environment that can feel really uncomfortable because we can't really see what's, you know, two feet in front of us. And so I feel like there is a situation here where someone is feeling things so strongly they all, about another person. It's a mixture of really complicated feelings, love, hate, I feel, you know, um, and unexplicable, like wanting somebody, but at the same time, it's like, oh no, that, that's not, you know, my usual type, or that's not, you know, um, that person would never go for me, or even, it's like falling in love with someone who you would classify as an enigma. It's someone who is mysterious. It's somebody who is confusing. It's somebody who is confused about their feelings for you. And so there might be a mirroring energy where you one day they're like very affectionate and the next they're, they would draw. And you're kind of confused as to, you know, do they like me or do they not? Do they want to get together or do they not? And I feel like someone's feeling is very strong. It's, it's, it's overwhelming almost. It's overwhelming where, you know, the, the first thing you wake up, you think about this person. Uh, the last thought on your mind is of this person right before you go to bed. So it, it's borderline obsession. I don't feel you have a lot of good cards here. And so I, I just don't feel like, um, it's a bad person for you. I don't feel like there's toxicity, um, you know, like like just bad things. I, I, I just don't feel like an icky, yucky vibe from it. I just feel like something is very strong. It's very pure, but you're having trouble even verbalizing your feelings. You're having trouble making sense of it. And honestly, <laughs> Because of all the choices and the options and the whole concept of famine and I want it all, you might be in a situation where you want to, um, where you want multiple people. You might be dealing with multiple, multiple people. Um, you might be dealing with somebody that you're married to or, you know, um, you're in a solid committed relationship with and then um, there's somebody else that is really drawing your attention and capturing your imagination, right? And then I also feel like you might be, you know, doing a lot of experimentation, like dating, finding out what works for you. And we're in this period where there are so many choices. Once again, Seven of Cups, and actually there's a lobster here. And uh, surrounding the lobster, not oysters, 
but um, snails. Okay, so I, I just feel like, you know, you're in a period where there are so many options, where there are so many choices, where there are so many possibilities. And look at those shells. They're so pretty, different colors. And you're kind of like this lobster trying to, you know, uh, look at your options, weigh out your options. And so I just feel like, you know, it's definitely, there's no famine here. This is a period of time where there are so many options in love and romance, where you're not going, you're, the, the, the real challenge is figuring out what works for you. And it, um, as well, you know, this is the show depiction here, lots of choices, lots of option. And so you're you're in a period where you have a lot to choose from and the temptation is really strong you might have you know the affinity towards multiple people we have here the choices um the lover's card this is a very strong um sexual energy okay like it's a, a really strong physical connection with another person um it's like finding our counterpart being able to it's like feeling very very strongly um, passionate, obsessed even, um, consumed with our emotions for another person and it flows mutually. So I, I definitely don't think this is unrequited at all. I feel like it is very strong and in some ways, um, I just feel like you're fighting yourself. You're fighting yourself about how you should react. Seven of wands, okay? Holding yourself back. And I also feel like, you know, your friends, your family members, the people who know you well might have, you know, their their opinions about this connection, about this person. And they might be telling you, what are you doing? You know, um, <clears throat> excuse me. They might be telling you, like, what are you doing? Um, why are you with this person? This is not a good match. Or, you know, they have their opinions. Everyone has their opinions. You might be dating two people. And people are just like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to two people? Or you might be dating multiple people and you're okay with it because this is a period of feast for you. You understand what it means to, you know, have gone through a period of famine and now you're in it. You just want to indulge. You want to get your hands dirty. You want to embrace life. You want to take up these opportunities because, you know, you understand that it doesn't come every day. This is not, you know, any time of the year, any time of the day. This is something very special. And so I feel like, you know, um, if people are judging or if people are giving you, you know, advice and you've never asked for it, it's like unsolicited advice, you're not going to give them the time of day. And so there is a partner here. It's, um, they're, they're bringing about, you know, like a major overhaul in your life i have the awakening card this is the judgment card contact communication this is once again very decadent the peacock okay um with this judgment card contact and communication i just feel like this person is bringing about a sense of awareness that has been very dormant within you you might have also gone a really long time without dating and then all of a sudden, all of these people are throwing themselves at you. And you're wondering, you're, you're kind of like, I feel, what is that word that's coming through? It's awakening your passion for the very first time. Somebody is awakening a part of you that has lain dormant for so long. And you began to doubt that, it, it, that, that the passion could even be awoken again. And a lot of the times, you know, if we've been through like a really bad relationship where we got our heart shattered to a million pieces, we find it really difficult to trust in, in another person, to believe in love, and to go out there and find a kindred soul. But somebody is coming into the picture and they really... Um, meet all your requirements and i also feel like they're they're awakening that dormant passion within you and it feels really good right like this is a really feel good decadent feast that's um happening in front of you i guess the advice here of course with all this passion and all this energy is for us to take things slow okay uh don't lose our sight 
see things in black and white so what this means is a lot of the times when we're in a relationship we feel that the other person that we're uh, in love with they can do no wrong we overlook a lot of bad traits a lot of bad things that surface at the uh, from the get-go because we're you know it's puppy love we're infatuated and um, <clears throat> And I feel like, you know, we're over, we're willing to overlook a lot of things. So this is kind of like telling you to kind of ground yourself, keep things in perspective. And you know, if they have faults, just make a mental note of it. Okay. Don't, um, don't get so wrapped up in the other person where you believe they can do no wrong. We're all humans, right? And it's not so much about the other person disappointing you. I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like a lot of the, the times too, uh, Libras, we can be disappointing ourselves by putting so much faith and, and you know seeing things through like a very naive lens. And we set our the relationship up for failure because it's not off to a realistic start. So they're really telling you this can work. This could be the one. But you have to, you know, build this relationship very slowly, methodically, and build it on a very solid footing. So that means, you know, no matter how passionately you feel about the other person, make sure that both parties are on board with the building process. Make sure that you're not the only one putting in all the work and all the effort because you're so infatuated. Infatuation is not a bad thing, okay? It's really strong desire and, and passion that we feel for somebody. It's not a bad thing, but it can be a bad thing if we're um, letting that kind of like um, cover up all the potential flaws in another person because we are not seeing things in a rational way, okay? So this is very much on par with the Aquarius reading. If you have Aquarius in your chart or if you're dealing with Aquarius, it indicates, you know, I, I feel like for the Aquarius reading, it's very similar energy, really similar. And um, if you're dealing with Aquarius, that might explain a lot because I feel like this is a, a really divine union. It's a true soulmate type of a connection between you and another person where they are awakening a side of you that um, that has not been there for a long time. And I'm talking like decades, I'm talking years. Um, they're awakening something inside of you that is very spiritual in nature as well. Okay, so um, I can't remember the Gemini reading, but I feel like with Gemini, um, there's definitely temptation with the Gemini reading, but I didn't see that with Aquarius reading. Um, I'm seeing temptation for you as well, but I don't feel like anybody's stepping out of the relationship. I just feel like there's so much, uh, passion here and so much potential for like, um, flirtation. And so let me talk about this. This is the six of cups. So, <coughs> excuse me, the six of shells, this is the six of cups, okay? Peas in a pod, okay? Um, finding somebody who is, so so the, the imagery of duality, right? Someone who's very different from you, but someone who's very compatible with you. Finding that kindred soulmate, finding that the, finding the one. The six of um, cups is usually like a, um, a soulmate connection. We've known um, one another in a previous incarnation, in a previous life. And I feel like you could recently just meet somebody or meet this person. And it feels like you've known them forever. There might be a lot of synchronicities, um, synchronicities surrounding your meeting, surrounding the history. So for example, you might have lived in this city and you go through life and like no one no one has ever heard of the city or no you don't know anyone who has traveled there or has even lived there and you meet somebody and they're like oh i know where that was i used to live there or you know you went to a specific college um you worked at a specific company and then it turns out that they also went to that college they also worked at that company uh, but the timing was was off and that's why you never met so it feels almost as if you know two souls trying to find each other and they were in the same place but at a different time and because of that their their paths never crossed 
And now in this moment of synchronicity for this month, something is, it's almost like a portal opening and two people are able to meet on either side of that portal where the timing is just right, where the location is just right, where the, 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 the condition surrounding it is just right. So for example, you might have somebody that, you know, you were really in love with and um, you were, you, you were single, but they were not. And then all of a sudden you, um, got into a relationship and then you find out they're single. So you keep missing each other. But then something happens, I feel like for this month, where the two of you are on the same page, living in the, the, the moment, in the same area, in the same vicinity, and things are able to take off. Because with this Six of Cups, is sentiment and joy. And I feel like, you know, you're going to be very, very happy. And the love card, it's a um, duality, you know, mirroring but also like the finding a mate being able to find the one who is exactly like you finding that missing part of your soul feeling really complete when you're with this person and the feeling is very mutual okay this is like a really strong very very strong soulmate type of a connection for you and and this person whoever it is it's really wonderful and What's crowning here is that, you know, once again, that devil energy, the shadow. And <clears throat> this is about as well. I feel like this person is going to be very transformative in your life. They're able to move you to the next evolution or the next phase of your life. And what that means to me is I feel some of you might be in a relationship that is very toxic. Um, you might have outgrown a relationship and I feel that you've met somebody while you're still attached. That's what it feels like to me. And this person is like a breath of fresh air and you're looking at things skeptically, right? Like, oh, you know, um, it's just a test or, you know, I'm attached. I really shouldn't go there. And I feel as if you're thinking um, it's not real. You're thinking like, this is too good to be true. It's not real. And I also feel that you're doubting the connection. You're just like, it's happening too fast for, for so long. I've been in this drought, in this famine, and in, in this state of like parched earth, like scorched earth, where I didn't feel anything, where there was not enough abundance. And then all of a sudden it happens and you doubt it. You doubt the connection and there's a part of you that you know is very rational where you overanalyze a situation and the way that it makes you feel and the way you respond to this person it just doesn't make sense and because it doesn't make sense you don't trust it and so i feel that you should let go of these things that are really holding you back and look at look at this situation for what it is all the synchronicities all the series of events that have to kind of like play out in order for the two of you to be able to meet and we have as well the moon furthermore confusion okay options confusion and i can assure you this is a very good connection you definitely should um explore it you definitely should take your time to get the other per know to get to know the other person and you want to do it with you know eyes wide open so that you're not um you're 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 not like blinded by the infatuation but then I also feel for many of you, you're in a really bad relationship. You've met somebody new that's like a breath of fresh air. And you're, it's, it's making you question and re-examine whether or not the current relationship is still good for you. Okay, it's still good for you. So that's for those who are in like a, a, an unhappy attachment, a relationship, a marriage, or whatever it is. You're questioning its... Um, viability in your future so enjoy this this moment whatever it is whatever this feast is for you um i just feel you know l let's say this man's eating a lobster at a really fancy you know venue and he's wearing a suit right and when you eat seafood your hands are going to get dirty you have to use those things to break the, the claws. You have to, you know, 
there's a lot of gunk inside seafood, right? Not in a bad way, but there's a lot of like little tidbits, juice and, and things like that. So it's a, it, it's not like um, a neat, uh, it, it's not like a sandwich. It's not like something that's easy to eat. You're going to get, you know, uh, guts and juice flowing all over. And so I feel like he's saying, I want everything. He really wants to experience that tactile sensation. He really wants to get his hands dirty. He's willing to put in the work. He's willing to, you know, it's not like I'm, it's not like he's on the sidelines nibbling at life. He wants the whole damn thing. And he's willing to get his hands dirty in order to get that. And so I, I just feel like your mind's already made up. You're going to get involved. You're going to do whatever it takes. I feel like you might be even fighting for, you know, like fighting for uh, a partner, fighting to get a partner, wanting to, to make yourself heard, wanting to make your feelings known to the other person. Okay. Which is wonderful because I, you know, you guys are usually, I would say kind of passive aggressive. You have an indirect way of going for what you want and you're not one to shout from the rooftop how you feel about another person so i feel this is like the energy of let's go for it let's do it let's um you know fight for the object of my desire like i i feel that this energy is about libra taking charge okay libras you are very much in control and taking charge and going like straight for it for whatever it is that you want, which is great. I'm glad to see this. So I will leave it at that Libras. I wish you the very, very best for this month. It looks amazing. Um, for those of you who are in need of guidance, who are, you know, who have questions about your life and, and choices and things like that. Um, I have a link in the description box below for a colleague of mine, her name is Bridget. She is phenomenal. I highly recommend that you get a, a reading with her. And uh, the link is in the description box below where you can click on the link, go to her website and you know schedule an appointment for yourself, okay? Um, I wish you the very best. I hope this uh, reading finds you well and best of luck with everything, okay? I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.